Welcome to our Asteroid Day 2020 digital panel on the Near Earth Object Modeling and Payloads for Protection, or NEOMAP project. NEOMAP is funded by the European Union's Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Programme. It's driven by the growing interest in asteroids and other near Earth objects, or NEOs. Interest ranges from the science that can be learnt to the resources that NEOs may one day provide, to the need for planetary defence. Yet despite this variety of reasons, all communities share common needs. For example, all need a spacecraft to work in close proximity to an NEO. So the NEOMAP project works to develop the common instruments, technologies and computer modelling capabilities that are required by all NEO missions. I'm Dr. Stuart Clark, an astronomer and journalist, and it gives me great pleasure to introduce my panelists. Dr. Patrick Michel, Research Director at CNRS. Dr. Naomi Murdoch, a planetary scientist at ISAE Supero. Dr. Jean-Baptiste Binsaint, a planetary scientist at DLR. And Dr. Julia de Lyon, a planetary scientist at IAC. Patrick, if I can start with you. NEOMAP is a fascinating project. Could you tell me more about its goals and how you got started? Yeah, thank you. So, in fact, the European Commission has been interested in uh, NEO since uh, early 2010. And they, the European Commission founded already two projects called NEO Shield and NEO Shield 2. And then uh, they released a call uh, two years ago uh, in order to basically continue the activities uh, aimed at uh, asteroid mitigation. And uh, in this call, there were several activities that were proposed, and we responded with uh, focusing on basically two activities. One uh, consists of uh, developing new modeling of NEOs uh, uh, in different areas. So the first one is uh, uh, developing new simulations of impact physics, because we are focused on uh, asteroid deflection, and one of the deflection techniques is a kinetic impactor, which is basically an artificial projectile that we launch on an asteroid to basically impact on it and push it from its original trajectory. But we need to understand this physics better. Uh, how an asteroid responds to an impact is not a very easy thing. And therefore, we want to develop new simulations. Another one is uh, uh, modeling better the, uh, act the evolution of an asteroid in terms of its physical properties, because asteroids are not simple solid rocks in space. They are, can be very complex, like you know, aggregates of boulders held together by gravity and how such a uh, body uh, made of boulders uh, evolve under different perturbation is something that we want to address with modeling. And then also the dynamics, because uh, we're, we're gonna concentrate on binary asteroids, so the equivalence of the Earth and the Moon uh, in a very small scale. And uh, we want to understand the dynamics of a, a natural moon of an asteroid around its primary body and how it may uh, evolve when we basically uh, impact one of them. And then there is another part of the project, which is a technology development. So basically we focus on instruments that we believe are essential uh, in an asteroid mission, if you want to characterize the new asteroid, and also measure the outcome of a deflection technique, so the kinetic impactor. Uh, and then also we want to uh, develop new ways of analyzing the data provided by the instrument uh, basically uh, with a multi-instrument approach, but I think Naomi will talk better about it. And then we have also uh, another activity, which is close proximity operations to an asteroid, because asteroids are very low gravity, so the attraction is not uh, very uh, strong, and therefore when you want to operate a small spacecraft around an asteroid, it's not an easy task, in particular if you want to deploy a lander or a micro lander, and therefore we need to understand better how to do that, especially on very, very small asteroids. And then, of course, there is outreach. So this is very nice. It's uh, very complex. We have 15 laboratories and two industries involved in this project. And uh, we decided to focus, uh, because when we responded and we were selected, uh, the mission, the HERA mission uh, of the European Space Agency was not yet approved by the ESA member states. And uh, as you know, uh, fortunately, it has been approved in November. And therefore, it gave a new path to this project because we decided to basically concentrate on the support 
of the development of HERA with these different activities because basically we need these activities for HERA. And uh, it makes all sense also because I am the coordinator of this project and I'm also the principal investigator of the HERA investigation team. And uh, the people who are on the panel and uh, other people in the NEO pro NEO map project are also members of the investigation team of HERA. So it was natural also for the European Commission to basically support the only real mission devoted to a, a, an asteroid deflection. And we're going to do that. But we will also go beyond that because, uh, of course, uh, when we talk about planetary defense, we need to have a roadmap. There is not only HERA, which, by the way, is also uh, accompanied by DART by, from NASA, but there's also beyond these missions. And therefore, we want to be prepared in Europe uh, uh, in general to better explore these bodies, in particular the very small ones, with a new way of analyzing the data, a better uh, way of modeling these asteroids, uh, and, and also a, a new instrument. So that's a, basically a, the aim of this very fascinating project. Mm. And one of the goals of NEOMAP um, is to develop new instruments. Uh, Naomi, you're involved in developing instruments to probe the surface and the interior of asteroids. Yeah, that's right. Actually, as part of the NEOMAP panel, NEOMAP project, we're developing five different instruments. Um, and each one of these instruments is going to be linked to measuring the surface properties or the internal structure of asteroids. Um, and at Iso Supero in Toulouse, what we're doing is we're combining our experience in space instrumentation with our expertise in seismology to develop seismic stations specifically for asteroid exploration. Yeah. And what's really interesting is we have reasons to believe that asteroids are actually seismically active bodies, which is why we want to put a seismometer on their surface. So some of the evidence for this is when we look at their surfaces, we can see landslide behaviors that seem to be triggered by shaking. We can see craters that are being eroded. We can even see regions where you have large particles and small particles that appear to be separated, segregated as the asteroid moves. And we think that the asteroid is moving because, for example, there's very small asteroids called meteorites that are hitting the surface and making it shake. And there may also be other factors like uh, the very large temperature, excursion, temperature excursions that we get on the surface can cause rocks to crack in the surface of the, of the asteroid generating seismic noise, um, like has actually been seen on the moon during the Apollo missions. Or even, as Patrick mentioned, this fact that the asteroid Didymus is going to be in a situation like the Earth and the moon, the tidal forces between these bodies, like the tidal forces that generate the tides on the Earth's oceans, may actually cause motion um, or, or, or seismic noise um, on the asteroids as well. And so what we want to do is we want to listen to these asteroid quakes and record them using our seismometer. And in the past, seismology has been a really interesting tool to, to study the internal structure of the Earth, of the Moon. And there's even a seismometer on the surface of Mars right now. It's called SIZE. It's part of the InSight mission that's studying the internal structure of the red planet. And so what we want to do with our seismometer from Isaiah Supero is to start looking inside an asteroid for the very first time using seismology. Mm, absolutely fascinating. Now, as important as spacecraft observations are, um, that's only one part of the puzzle. And Julia, I believe that ground-based observations um, also play a key role in maximizing the science return from these missions. Actually, they do. Uh, when, you are, um, when you start planning uh, to visit an asteroid within spacecraft, you basically have to decide which one. And uh, for that, you need to know as much as possible uh, from the target that you, you want to visit. So the way you do that is from the ground with all the limitations that, that you have, but it's uh, basically our main uh, source of information prior to visiting any asteroid. And of course, you want to uh, put uh, your results from that specific asteroid into the general context of the population in order to properly interpret uh, what, you, what you have found. So it's extremely important to, to do um, uh, ground-based observations and it's basically our main um, source of information in a, in a general and a statistical uh, way. 
Mm. Now, in particular, I think you're coordinating a ground-based observation campaign around the DART mission uh, to asteroid Didymos um, and with Hera following on afterwards as well. So how big is that effort um, and what do you hope to measure? Well, actually, in the case of uh, HERA mission and DART mission, we have one particular uh, asteroid that we're going to visit. And, and in that case, it's even more important to have uh, all the information that we can prior to the arrival of the, of the spacecraft, because we are going to change uh, the properties, at least the dynamical properties of this secondary object that is orbiting the primary object, the Didy Moon or the Didy Moss B. And for that, to, to really to interpret if what we are looking at is really something that we modified or it was the natural state of the, of the target, we really need to observe it from the ground first. And for that, as this is a very tricky and we need very precise measurements, we are using our largest telescopes, uh, like the one that we have in the Canary Islands, the Gran Telescopio Canarias, which is a 10.4 meter telescope. And uh, yeah, I'm proud to be part of uh, this uh, scientific installation. Uh, actually, I live very nearby, just one hour driving. So I will be the one, <laughs> the lucky one, that will be the, doing the observations. We already did some observations in the 2019 uh, apparition, and we are planning uh, more observations to really um, find out what is the, uh, the rotation state, what is the dynamical state. Uh, of this uh, target that we're going to impact with the with the DART spacecraft, and through the uh, the course of the mission, when DART impacts the um, asteroid, you'll also be observing from the ground then as well. Yes, we are uh, uh, indeed. We are planning to do some, uh, uh, let's say, live observations while the impact is occurring to see if we are able to detect anything from the any change. From the from the from our telescopes, and uh, we are actually planning some uh, observational campaigns that will last for several days after the impact, in order to try to follow all these particles that we expect that will be ejected from the impact, and to see if this uh, redeposition of these particles on the primary mainly uh, will uh, produce any change in the colors of the surface, uh, so we can detect them from the ground. Yeah. Mm. Now, Naomi, I believe that um, when you combine these different data sets, um, that can help extract even more knowledge and information about the asteroids. So tell me how that works for an asteroid's physical properties. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Stuart. So one of the most challenging but important parts of the NEOMAP project is actually to take a fusional approach to the measurements that are going to be made by spacecraft during an asteroid mission. Um, and this is something that doesn't always happen because normally individual instrument teams will develop their instrument and analyze the data behind it. But what we want to do, um, the NeoMap team, is we want to develop a multi-instrument approach to be able to increase the synergies between the different instruments. Um, and an example of this, like you said, is uh, concerning the physical properties of asteroids. So there are multiple instruments that could be used to determine the physical properties of asteroids. A radar used radio waves, a seismometer detects ground motion, an accelerometer can be used to measure how much the ground deforms during a landing on the asteroid. Um, and if we had all of these different measurements together about one asteroid, that would allow us to get a much better picture of the physical properties of the asteroid in question. And another way of looking at it is if you think about your own senses, um, all your senses individually provide very important information. But what your brain does is it combines all those senses together in order to give a very complete picture, the most complete picture possible of the world around you. Mm. However, if we want to do this with our instruments, we need to spend some time developing the brain or developing the co-processing tools as we call them. And so that's what we're going to be doing with NeoMap. We're going to develop these tools um, and that will allow us to increase the scientific return of future space missions. And we can be ready to, to receive and analyze the data, interpret the data when it comes from these future space missions. Mm. Paint me a little bit of a picture as well about um, the different kinds of asteroids that, and the different kinds of properties that asteroids may have. Um, it's very easy um, to think that, say, asteroids um, are just lumps of rock in space and pretty much all the same as one another. But I think that's not quite um, what we're, we're understanding anymore, is it? 
No, that's right. It's every single space mission we do to an asteroid presents us with new surprises, uh, which is incredibly exciting. We learn so many different things from every space mission. Um, and so what we can see is that some asteroids appear to be more of a, a large blocks, sort of monolithic blocks, and other ones appear to be rubble piles that are sort of a accumulation of uh, blocks and boulders held together by gravity, as Patrick mentioned earlier. Mm. And what's fascinating is even though um, we might understand the physical properties of some of the individual parts of these asteroids, for example, from studying meteorites that have fell, fallen onto Earth. What we don't understand necessarily is how they behave in a low gravity environment that you're going to find at the surface of an asteroid, um, because things are different. And that's why it's so important to go there um, for the DART mission to test this hypervelocity impact at a real scale for planetary defense but also for smaller scale interactions with the surface to try to understand um, how the surface responds. Uh, it's important to understand the geology of these bodies, planetary defense again, but also for future space resources utilization. Mm. And Jean-Baptiste, I think that you are also pioneering ways to combine different types of asteroid data. Yes, yes, that, that is correct. And um, to, to, to expand a bit on what Naomi has been telling before, Usually in space missions, you have many instruments and each one is addressing a very specific scientific question. And because this is data that is very complex and difficult to analyze, it often takes years uh, for, for the data from all instruments to be, to be put together and combined into a cohesive story. So with NeoMark, we are trying to, to, to use a different approach and we try to design synergies in the data analysis already from the beginning, even before we, we have a mission. And one example of that, for instance, is uh, what we call shape modeling. So, um, for instance, if you want to know what an asteroid is made of, it's very important to understand its density. And density comes from mass and volume. The, the mass you know because you can measure how the, the gravity of the asteroid is changing the trajectory of your spacecraft. But for the volume, you need to be able to reconstruct very precisely the, the full shape of the asteroid. And Typically, we do this by taking many, many images from different angles and uh, uh, put them together with very complex algorithm to, to match features that are the same between different images and try to understand how far they are from the spacecraft. And this is very time consuming and it's also uh, a very difficult process. Now, there are other techniques. For instance, we can use uh, a LIDAR, which is a, a laser ranging technique we, we measure um, the, the time it takes for some light to be reflected, so some light sent by the spacecraft to be reflected by the surface of the asteroid. And this gives us a precise measure of the distance between the, the spacecraft and the asteroid. And with that, we get very, very accurate measurement. But of course, because the, the laser beam is very tiny, we cannot cover the full surface with, with uh, uh, very, very high resolution. So what we are trying to do, for instance, with NeoMark is to combine data from the laser ranging that will give us very accurate distance on specific locations on the asteroid with data from, from the, the, the camera, so images, in order to get to reconstruct the high resolution shape in between these points that are taken by, by the LIDAR. Mm -hmm. And so by doing so, we will have a, a very, very good shape model uh, at, at the highest resolution for less let's say less processing than uh, than we would have if we would use only one instrument mm. so it all sounds just so exciting and such a coherent program um i wonder if you could just paint us a picture jean baptiste of what we might hope to know um, about asteroids in the next 10 years thanks to the efforts of neomac yeah, I think one of the big, big frontier in, in asteroid science is uh, the interior structure of these objects. Uh, we, we have been literally only scratching the surface so far with all the previous missions, and we, we have very, very little knowledge of what is inside the asteroids. And with, uh, with new technology development projects like, like NeoMark uh, linked to missions like Terra and, and DART, uh, we are going to be able to look directly below the surface with instruments like, uh, like radars, for instance, or by measuring precisely the gravity field and, and, and the mass and, and things like that. And we will get a much better picture of what is the internal structure of these objects. And this is important for, of course, for, for, for uh, asteroid deflection, for planetary defense, 
but also on a more fundamental level because it tells us about how the subjects came together, how they were formed. And so all this is tied to the, the story of the, the formation of the solar system and, and evolution of the objects uh, that are all around us. Mm. Who else has um, a hope for the next 10 years about what you might discover about asteroids? If you could, if you could tick the, the, the top question off of your list, what would, what would each of you briefly like to know? Okay, yeah, I'll go for it. Uh, so first I have a hope is to be proven wrong again, <laughs> as always, <laughs> because for now, I mean, each time we went to a new asteroid, it's true that uh, it turned our understanding on its head and we see it with Osiris Rex and Hayabusa 2, which uh, went to the, the first very primitive near Earth objects uh, and sent us very, fascinating images and we are still scratching our heads to understand what we're seeing. So hopefully we will uh, get uh, better knowledge also with the samples. But uh, uh, I think we'll still have a lot of uh, uh, surprise in particular. Uh, one question will be what will be the outcome of the dark impact? Because I'm thinking 10 years ahead, basically we have a, a three missions uh, that will, uh, will be there. There will be a DART and HERA. There will be the Psyche mission which is going to see the asteroid Psyche, uh, which is supposed to be a metallic object, so the, the, the reigning core of a protoplanet, but we are not sure. So that's another surprise. I really want to see what is Psyche because there is a big ambiguity in what it is, because as Julia said, ground-based observations are crucial uh, uh, to prepare the missions. Uh, space missions are very important to verify the prediction of ground-based information and provide ground truth. So with Psyche, we really have something to verify. And then there is a Lucy mission, who will be the first mission to go to see Trojan asteroids. And these are the ones which share the same orbit as Jupiter. And uh, for these objects, for sure, we don't have meteorites in our collection. So we have to go there to know what they are. But coming back to Dart and Hera, which is more related to any map, um, the question is, what would be the crater made by Dart? Because uh, we are going to visit the smallest asteroid ever visited, which is the moon of Didymos. It's about 165 meters in size. And uh, uh, with the modeling, hopefully we'll have a better understanding, but still it's, it's modeling. It's very complex to understand crater formation in a very, very low gravity environment. And one example is uh, the crater made by Hayabusa 2, uh, small carry-on impactor experiment. It was a two kilogram projectile shot at 50 meters per second and made, made a much bigger crater than we expected. So mm -hmm. with Hera, looking at the crater led by DART will be very important. And, and I'm pretty sure that we'll have a, a lot of surprise and, in, and also the interior st internal structure as uh, Jean-Baptiste said. I just want to add something which is not science related, but I want to say something which is very fascinating with ENIOMAP and all space missions is that it allows many different countries to work together. In ENIOMAP, we have uh, many different countries in Europe. So different cultures, different ways of working, and it's already something complex, so it's very fascinating. And also uh, uh, new challenges. And uh, I think we are developing, as Naomi said, uh, we cannot put an astronaut in our mission. So we develop the brain that should accompany this mission to uh, uh, better analyze the data. So it's a very exciting. Mm -hmm. This multicultural approach and multi-instrument approach is very exciting. Yes, I find that very um, inspiring and exciting myself because, after all, we're, we're all in this together. Um, Julia, do you have any um, hopes for the, uh, for the next 10 years of discoveries? Well, I think Patrick summarized that very well, that question, uh, with his answer. I'm just willing to, to, to be surprised again. Luckily enough, we've been surprised by all the space missions that we are sending to, uh, as many people say, well, another near-Earth asteroid? Why are you visiting another asteroid? Well, it's just not another, it's a different one. Every, every one that we have visited is different from the rest and is teaching us something different. So um, hopefully we will discover many, many things with DART and HERA, uh, in particular because this is also the very first binary system that we are visiting with the spacecraft. And that's very, very exciting. This is um, uh, different from anything that we've been uh, before. Uh, it's one small object or biting another one. So there are a lot of interactions and uh, many things that we are going to, to discover by visiting uh, with the spacecraft. And of course, this start impact 
that uh, will show us what's happening there. And um, I hope that it's going to be uh, really exciting. And, and yeah, that, that's my, my, my hope that we will be surprised again. And why not? Well, yeah, let's, let's be wrong again and let's uh, <laughs> rethink everything. That's how we learn. Absolutely. Um, sadly, we are out of time. I could talk about this kind of stuff all day um, and you've been absolutely fantastic. So thank you so much for all your explanations and your time. Um, really, really interesting. And of course, thank you to all of you for joining us here on this year's Asteroid Day Live.